Our paper is titled, Challenges for Global Supply Chain Sustainability, Evidence from Conflict Minerals Reports. The question that animated us was, is there any way to be sure that the products that we buy are made in ethical and sustainable ways all the way through the supply chain? Take an example. Suppose you have a cute cat. You go to the store to buy some cat food. You pick up a can of Purina Fancy Feast seafood flavored cat chow. Turns out that the shrimp that go into this product are caught by slaves working off the coast of Thailand. Should you feel guilty? Maybe not, because how could you know? But what about Nestle, which owns the Purina brand? Surely they should know what's going on in their supply chain. Or do they? It turns out that we have something of a natural experiment to answer this question. Section 1502 of the Dodd-Frank Act of 2010 requires companies whose products contain tantalum, tungsten, tin, or gold to trace their supply chain and report on whether they're using conflict minerals that may be funding armed conflict in the Democratic Republic of Congo, or DRC. Companies had almost four years to report on whether or not they were buying DRC conflict minerals. Notably, they didn't have to change their supply chain, they just had to report honestly on what was going on. Fast forward to 2014. Over 1,300 companies filed conflict mineral reports with the SEC. We analyzed all of them with a combination of computerized content analysis and human coders. What did we find? Only about 1 in 100 companies could say with certainty that they weren't inadvertently buying conflict minerals from the DRC. Another 20% were reasonably sure that their products were clean but almost 80% admitted that they had no idea. The next year, same thing. The next year, same thing. Remember, they won't get punished for funding genocide, but they will get in trouble for lying about it. So how can giant multinationals be so clueless about where their raw materials come from? The short answer is nikeification. Our analyses showed that companies that have bigger and more dispersed supply chains and that operate over a bigger geographic footprint are generally unable to trace their supply chains. We interviewed a bunch of supply chain managers and they explained it. Suppose you have a thousand first-tier suppliers and you send out a survey asking about conflict minerals. What kind of response rate will you get? Now imagine if they have 8,000 second-tier suppliers and they have 30,000 third-tier suppliers and those third-tier suppliers are buying from a broker who buys from a smelter who buys unfinished minerals from the mines. This is what your supply chain looks like. What would it take for you to state with confidence that your products were free of conflict minerals? What does all of this mean? Eighty years ago, Ford Motor Company made almost all the parts that went into their cars on site. They had control of their supply chains all the way back to the mines. With today's vertically disintegrated companies, we are far more ignorant than we used to be about the moral consequences of the products that we buy, 